all of this, all of this whole story happened because I had a conversation with somebody on an airplane. So what brought me to Vancouver? Why have I decided that Vancouver is the city for me? And the straight answer is I don't know. There's something that brought me here. There's something that's drawn me to this location. And I'm just gonna try to let this life and whatever is maybe predestined play out the way it's gonna play out. There was something deep inside me that said I needed to be here because I came here a few years ago, left, but then I've always been drawn back and I decided to come back. So I wanted to take some time just to talk about that story or to talk about what, what it is that brought me to this city in the first place. My choice to live in Vancouver actually didn't really have anything to do with hiking and nature and all that sort of stuff. Like uh, Vancouver is known for that. There's a lot of great places nearby. And for sure, if this is, if you were looking for this video to be something along the lines of why you should come to Vancouver, this isn't really it. This is just more why I personally came here. It had nothing really to do with the environment. It was just more to do with my own personal growth, self-development, and for some reason, this seems to be the place for it. So if you're here for 10 things to do in Vancouver, I'm not really talking about that. Just don't do the grouse grind. I did that my first day. Or if you'd like to torture yourself, do the grouse grind. But I did that my first day here after a 24 hour bus ride. And that was one time enough. So the year is 2017. I'm working up in Northern Alberta in Fort McMurray. I'm a recreation coordinator for Canadian Natural Resources. My job is recreation. We make things look nice for holidays. I run some spin classes, some group fitness classes, a little bit of training, and then, and that's essentially it. There's not a whole lot to it. It's a pretty easy job. But I was doing 22 day on, eight day off rotations. And anyone who does rotation work and has worked in oil or mining and that sort of thing, they know that it's not the easiest life. It's not the easiest lifestyle. The money can be good, but you don't have much time for anything else. And uh, a lot of those guys that are up there on to their second or third marriages, uh, or don't have any relationships at all, or don't have any too, too many friends outside of the camps. So I knew that that ultimately wasn't the life for me. But at the time it was good just to be making some money. One of the main things we had to do in that job was we had to do something called Red Hot Poker Tournaments. And I know absolutely nothing about poker and I still don't. What I had to do is I had to sit and these guys would come in, play poker. Every 15 minutes I had to say blind up or bluff up or whatever that is, where the price of everything goes up, the value of the buy-ins. Uh, so clearly still don't know what I'm talking about. That was my job and I had to record who won. And every three to four months, we would have another tournament, like a big tournament to see who would win. And after a year, we had about four guys who won the tournaments. The recreation coordinator was responsible then for booking the flights and taking them down to Las Vegas for the big Red Hot Poker tournament. There was about three recreation coordinators at the time. I was one of them and the other two weren't able to do it. So it fell on me to take these guys down. So I basically got a free trip, four days, five nights, in Las Vegas. So not too shabby, I'd never been there. And all I had to do was just take these grown men down and make sure they were registered. And after that, I could do whatever the hell I wanted. So pretty sweet. And I, we get to the plane, we, we fly from Edmonton to Vancouver. As we're waiting, uh, the, the plane fills up and I'm sitting and I have two extra seats to my side, I'm next to the window and it's looking like nobody's gonna be sitting next to me. Excellent, I get to listen to my music all the way, whatever. The last person to get on the flight sits down, not next to me, but into the aisle. I'm like, okay, whatever. It is what it is. Almost had this thing to myself. But then I look down at his wrist and I, I see he's wearing a Breitling Navi timer. Now, I had just started getting into watches, uh, horology, studying watches and the like. I had just bought my own uh, Tissot Viso date, which is nothing special, but to me it was a, a pretty big investment. Down the road, I would definitely love to invest more into watches, but we start talking. I go, hey man, that's an awesome watch. And we start chit chatting and, and discussing it. I talked, you know, discussing what he does and I was telling him why I was taking these guys down to Vegas. And he looks at me and he goes, so you don't have anybody there? You're like, you're not hanging out with anybody? Uh, no, nothing in particular. So he says, how about you hang out with me and my friends? We're gonna be at the Palm Spring Casino. Awesome, okay. So I drop these guys off and we get everything settled and I head down to the casino. Now at the time I was just wearing shorts and at the bar or at the uh, entrance to the, to the nightclub, 
the bouncer goes, no, you, you have to have pants. You're not allowed to come in in shorts. So fortunately there was a store next to the nightclub that was still open that was selling clothes. So I went in there and bought whatever they had. All they had was a 38 inch uh, pair of jeans and, and a belt that was still too big for me. So it kind of looked like uh, I was a, a hobo with my the drawstring pulled and the, the material just kind of bagging out over top of the belt. But anyway, I did, I did what I got to do. And I got into the club and partied with my buddy. And eventually he left with his friends. And, and then I went back to the, the hotel and I figured, okay, that was it. Interesting interaction, cool story. But that's probably it. But uh, about a day or so later, he messages me. He goes, hey man, like, do you want to hang out again I, with my friends? And I go, sure. So go and hang out with them. Uh, he had missed his flight to LA and he had an extra couple days in Vegas. And then he asked me if I wanted to go with them to LA. I was supposed to fly back, I think the next day to Edmonton. I had a couple extra days in Edmonton before I had to go back to camp. I told him that and he goes, well, why would you spend time in Edmonton? Come on, like, let's go to LA. I ended up actually being the one, maybe I was kind of drawn into it, but hey, I'm always open to interesting experiences. I ended up being the one that rented the car. So I ended up renting a car and I hadn't really driven in quite a while aside from just around the camp. And so I, I rent this car and drive him and his buddy from Vegas to LA through like a sandstorm, through these little tiny towns. And and yeah, it was really interesting getting onto the highway and, and all that, but it was fun. And I got to Santa Monica and we stayed in Santa Monica for a bit. I saw Venice Beach, we went to a couple clubs and you know, he was just dropping money. He was just buying the drinks, you know, bottle service, all this sort of stuff. And I'm going, man, like who am I hanging out with? This is crazy. I never experienced anything like this before. As we're, as we're kind of wrapping up and I'm gonna be flying back to camp, my buddy goes, hey, well, if, if you're ever in Vancouver, if you ever need a place to crash, just let me know and I'll set it up for you. I'm like, awesome, that's so great, thanks so much. Stayed up that night. I had to catch the 4 a.m. flight from LAX to Edmonton, uh, so I didn't sleep at all, but got back to camp, basically like, Two days later, the management comes to me and they go, we're just, we're getting rid of the recreation here. Where we've got a new recreation team coming in from a different company. We're gonna have to lay you off. <sighs> so, so now I'm out of a job. Literally a couple days later, I call up my buddy and I go, hey, does the offer still stand? Am I able to crash at your place? And he goes, sure, yep, you can come down to mine. The whole situation to me just seems so strange, so serendipitous, so unexpected, like just like kind of that, universal guidance, like all these things are all falling into place to make this happen. And I don't know why. So I, I hop on a bus and go from Edmonton to Vancouver and I end up crashing at his place for a month and a half, going along with him to a bunch of his different business meetings and, and then partying with him in the at night and we're going to all these different clubs and he used to be a co-owner at one of them and so we're sitting there getting bottle service and it just seems so surreal and so just, what is even happening? And so I decided that I was gonna end up staying in Vancouver. I got a job at the gym at Equinox. My ultimate goal actually, when I came, first came to Vancouver, I wasn't even gonna stay there. I was just gonna be there for a little bit. And then I wanted to take what I had earned in, in Alberta, go off to Thailand and train in the Muay Thai camps for a few months. But ultimately I decided, no, I wanna stay in Vancouver. I wanna try this out. Though that still is a dream of mine. That is still something I'm working towards is getting down to Thailand and doing that. So maybe all of you can help me. Maybe if I can grow this YouTube channel and, and this army of, uh, of people that are interested in these sorts of topics, that maybe that can still be something I accomplish one day. I, I, had, this, I had this feeling of that this is where I needed to be. Eventually, my buddy and I kind of parted our ways a little bit. Like I got busy with my work and, and he was busy doing his thing. So we would only meet every now and then and, and chat and catch up. And eventually I ran out of money. Like living in Vancouver is not the cheapest and personal training is a very like, fluctuating job. You're, you can be doing okay one moment and then all your clients leave the next. So anyway, I ended up with no money. So I decided to go back to Alberta and, and make it again. And I was in Alberta for just over a year, saved up a decent amount. But in my heart, I always knew that Vancouver, I wanted to be back here, that this was the city that I wanted to establish something. And I can't explain it, I don't know why, but there's just, sometimes you have these forces that are just drawing you somewhere. So at the end of 2019, I got laid off, uh, probably because I was, my heart really wasn't in it to be in Alberta. And I think they kind of understood that and got that and they realized they were paying me too much money for me to not be doing what I should be doing. So they laid me off and I went back to Nova Scotia because I didn't know where else to go. Uh, stayed with my parents for a few months and then of course 
the pandemic hit in 2020 and I laid low in Nova Scotia for a bit. I got a job at a car dealership, was selling cars for just before it hit. But deep down, I just knew that this wasn't for me. This isn't where I need to stay. That I was, I, I went to Vancouver for a reason. I still don't know what that reason is. I'm trying to discover that and, and let things unfold as they will. But even now, even with you know struggling financially, trying to pay my rent, pay my bills, uh, build my businesses, I still feel like I'm in the right place and I still feel I'm where I need to be. I, I knew I didn't want to be in Nova Scotia. I called up my old boss and I just said, hey, can I get my job back? Like, I want to be in Vancouver. And she agreed. Of course, I also had applied to the Vancouver Police Department, as you know from some of my videos. And I'm going to dive a little bit deeper in another video as to how that all played out and why I kind of originally applied for it and why I think it's probably good that I didn't get it. So I, I get my old job back and I come back to Vancouver and I've been here since September and, and reestablishing all that stuff. Uh, my business and, and just trying to build what I can here. But ultimately what I want to say though is that all of this, all of this whole story happened because I had a conversation with somebody on an airplane. We chatted, we connected and one thing led to another and then that brought me to here. And so I just, I think that those stories are pretty cool and pretty interesting. And, and if you're going through something like that, say you're, you're being offered something new and exciting and different, and you're contemplating whether or not you should say yes. Obviously if a creepy guy rolls up and it's like, hey, like I got some candy in here, you wanna come in? I mean, maybe don't do that. Uh, <laughs> I imagine it's probably not the safest decision. If something appeals to you, but it scares you, and you're not sure about what you should do. You know, you can make a pros and cons list and all that, but life's too short for those sorts of regrets. I, I think deep down, you know the answer, yes or no, to an offer. If somebody does say, hey, like, wanna come with us and do this or do that, and, and deep down, you, you can feel that the answer is yes. I think you should go for it, and I think you should do it, and just dive in with both feet. And that's what I did. Uh, for better or for worse, the story's still unraveling, so hopefully it will turn into something good, but if it doesn't, it's still my life and it's still the things that are happening to me. And, and I think if I hadn't agreed to those opportunities, I would probably regret it. So anyway, that's just my message to you is, is be open-minded, be open to new experiences and you never know where it's going to lead and if it's going to be a positive thing. And I think it ultimately will be. You, you look back and you go, man, if I hadn't said yes to that, I wouldn't be here now. And I'm hoping that for myself and I'm hoping that for you for whatever it is that you're contemplating on doing. Anyway, hopefully you liked that story. Thanks again for listening. And as always, I can't wait to talk to you in the next one. David out.